U.S. investigators are promising new details today on that deadly bridge disaster in Baltimore. The head of the National Transportation Safety Board says the investigation is already underway and key information from the ship has been recovered. We'll have more on that in just a moment. Right, right now, a recovery operation is also underway. Divers trying to find the bodies of the six victims who are now presumed dead. They're believed to be part of a construction crew working on the bridge when the container ship hit a central pillar. Divers will be searching for them in and around tons of steel and concrete debris. Let's go live now to Chris Reyes in Baltimore, standing as close as she can to the scene. Chris, we're learning this morning of some major developments in this investigation. Bring us up to speed. Absolutely, Marianne. Big update from the NTSB this morning. We now know that their investigators were able to board that cargo ship overnight, the ship that is still sitting on top on the Patasco, uh, Patapsco River right behind me. They were able to board the ship. They were able to go into the engine room there. They were able to look at the bridge structure that's sitting on top of the cargo ship. They gathered some documentation and then more importantly, Importantly, Marianne, they were able to gather the data recorder, also known as the black box, and they have sent that black box uh, to the lab, and if, uh, they will be getting they'll be getting some information uh, from that data recorder, and they'll be able to piece a timeline of events leading up to this ship colliding with the bridge. So potentially, we could get more answers about that power outage that was so visible from the CCTV footage, the lights flickering. We also heard from NTSB chair Jennifer Homedy about what their investigators are prioritizing as they board that ship again later today. We have a team of 24 investigators, uh, various specialties. They are focused on collecting the perishable evidence. That is uh, all the documentation, including pictures and uh, components that we may need on the vessel or amongst the structure uh, to begin to conduct our investigation. With regard to analysis and really looking at the documents and digging into inspections and what occurred leading up to the striking, that will take a longer amount of time. Right now, it's getting what would disappear once this is cleaned up. And so, you know, a long road for this investigation, but it begins today. We know that NTSB investigators will also be interviewing the crew members that were on board that ship when this collision happened. They'll be talking to the first responders that were here uh, when the collision happened and to some of the crews that really blocked this bridge from um, traffic when that May Day call came in. We're also waiting to hear from officials about the divers that were supposed to go into the water at 6 a.m. Eastern time today. And we were talking at that time, Marianne, you saw that it was pitch black. And one of the biggest concerns for divers on top of all of the debris that's underwater right now is the low to zero visibility. So we'll wait to hear to see if those divers have been able to go into the water. Yeah, and they are, of course, well-trained for recovery missions like what we are about to see or will soon see unfold there in the river in Baltimore. But also looking at the images of the scene there, you can just see how quickly that water is moving, which may be also making this a little bit tricky for those as they continue to try to look for anyone in that debris. Let's talk more about the divers, though, because once they ultimately do get back in the water, what are we learning about the victims? And just to add a, a little bit to that, uh, rain is also in the forecast all day today, so that could complicate the mission for the divers, just to add that one little bit of information there, Marianne. What we're learning uh, about the six crew members that plunged into that frigid water, the Guatemala consulate in Maryland posted on Facebook that two of the missing workers were from that country. 
CASA, a nonprofit that serves immigrant families in this area, also confirmed that one of the dead is a father of three from El Salvador. We also heard from Mexican and Honduras officials saying that uh, some of the other missing crew members are from their country. We know that yesterday there was a vigil for friends, family, relatives. It, that happened at, at a church in Baltimore yesterday. Uh, you, you can imagine that more of those um, gatherings will happen today because the information that we're getting is that many of these crew members lived in these communities for many years uh, with their families. And uh, just to, to show you a little bit about what's happening around me, Marianne, a lot of emergency uh, vehicles going into the site. This is the road that leads right into that bridge. So uh, presumably they're, they're setting up for what is scheduled to be a very long day ahead uh, for this now massive team on the ground here in Baltimore. Chris Reyes, thanks so much for your coverage this morning so far, keeping an eye on the latest developments in Baltimore.